Bling Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. The governor actually did a proclamation. Okay. And uh, I understand that there are lots and lots of people that may be affected by gambling. Mm -hmm. They may not admit it because it's like a drug. Sure. You know, it's an addictive disorder. We want to raise awareness today. And actually, the topic is have the conversation. Right. The uh, national affiliates chose this year that we would um, streamline, have the conversation as a logo, because most often we don't talk about gambling problems, and we don't even know to even ask people. Um, unlike other addictions where you could smell alcohol, sense that somebody's high or under the influence, um, this addiction can go what we call um, almost invisible or Like hidden. silent. You know, and I know that there are a lot of people who do gamble responsibly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people treat it as a pastime. Correct. But there are others who are just out of control. Right. Majority of the population, the statistics show us anywhere from 92 um, to probably 98% of the population gamble responsibly and will never have an issue with it. And and, and we're not concerned about them, and we're not against gambling with our organization. What we're into is treatment and providing help for the problem gambler and their families. And so this month, specifically to awareness of that, is asking people um, maybe any signs or symptoms that they see. Maybe if somebody is showing financial problems or depression in connection to financial issues that I think that that would be something to um, look at for this population is asking the question, do you gamble and do you ever have um, concerns about your gambling or have you ever lied about that? And how do you I, I just specifically identify, what are some of the signs that you can look for maybe for a person in your family? Uh, do they become distant? Uh, I think that some of what what I tell people besides the financial concerns would be if somebody uh, talks about their gambling and only talks about the winning, not that all and of you us... you never win it, as much as you right, lose. Right, and, and all of us want to win, of course, of course. but it, reality is it's, it's generally something that you leave the money there and you lose more than you win. But if if oftentimes people are only talking about the winnings versus the losses, if, if they're always complaining about issues with um, different areas of finances and, and concerns, because again, gambling doesn't come in the way of a casino or a video poker room. It comes in people. And so people get addicted, even those who don't want to or, or are great in business and management, um, as well as with their families, in high regard in their community. People develop these problems all the time. And so we just want people to talk about it as much as somebody might talk about drugs and alcohol, but you can't see this one the same. We know that. Now, you know, I noticed that, uh, you know, there are a lot of elders mm -hmm. uh, who enjoy this for a pastime. And I do have a friend, and she says, Portia, you know, I don't, uh, enjoy all the luxuries like you do. I don't get my hair done. I don't get my nails done. Right. This is my escape. This sure. is what I like to do. And, and again, for those people who have a fixed amount of entertainment money, recreation money in their budget to spend for this, it is really no different than going to dinner, going to the show, going out to the theater, um, playing around a golf. It's just that when they move into the areas of their bill money, their um, responsible uh, areas of uh, paying for something that they're to do monthly, weekly, or yearly, and they're taking that money, that's what it starts looking like it could be a problem. And again, no one wants to develop a problem with gambling. It just does happen, though. And it happens sometimes more subtly than people think. Now, we were talking, there, there is some help. There is a lot of help in Louisiana. In fact, um, our state is um, probably more inundated with counselors that are gambling certified all over the state of Louisiana. The help for a Louisiana resident in 2015, this is my goal to get this out, 
is that all Louisiana residents can receive treatment at no cost. They can go to treatment at the residential treatment facility core, the Center of Recovery in Shreveport, Louisiana, and they can receive treatment throughout, like in Lafayette here, as well as Baton Rouge, Homa, Hammond, Monroe, all over the state are gambling certified counselors that can help the family, friends, and the actual gambler if they want outpatient counseling as well. And it's free. That's good to know. Have we in the state of Louisiana identified uh, the many people who actually, is there a number? Yeah, in Louisiana, the research, uh, most prevalent studies have shown us two to about 4%. And, and again, the, the reasoning behind that is you're capturing um, probably not the, the number one essence of all the people, be it through denial, um, lack of capturing the correct numbers, but it looks like Louisiana, because we like to be ahead of the game sometimes, is maybe at about 4%. So even though 4% of the population having a problem with gambling is not a lot of people, it's that 100% would be that person's issue if it's in your family. So if it's my brother, mother, husband, or yours, 4% doesn't mean anything. It's 100% on them. Right. And 100%. So, I, so my goal is to make sure everybody knows that treatment is a phone call away. If they would call the 1-800 number that you see at the bottom of and the And we hear that disclaimer when uh, we hear it on television, we hear it on radio. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, 1-877-770-STOP. Stop. Mm -hmm. We hear that uh, disclaimer all the time. Um, well, and we also developed, Portia, the um, texting abilities. Really? What we decided was there's certain populations, maybe younger than you and I, that love to text or chat. And so we have on our website, on uh, www.helpforgambling.org, okay. we have a chat line and a text ability. So if you text no bet, N-O-B-E-T, and 66746, and you can text away, ask people your questions, tell them your concerns. You have an actual person that answers the chat, the text, as well as a phone call. We, we man the helpline for Louisiana. Our organization is a nonprofit private organization. And we have people that answer it 24 7, as well as a treatment center, and the counselors have an on call phone all over the state. So there's no reason for people not to call. You know, I was going to ask Janet, you know, games of chance have been around forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking for their pot of gold at the mm -hmm. end of the rainbow. But uh, we know that the uh, numbers always say, uh, you know, you lose more than you win. And a sure. lot of people, you know, they like to make you think that they win all the time. And a lot of people, like my friend, it's just their thing, their pastime. Right. You know, but when we see people struggling to pay their bills, when we see people you know, that uh, just don't set aside that certain amount? Mm -hmm. Is there, a, you know, a, my, my question is, is there a way, like, to begin cutting back, or or, th or, or do you just cold turkey stop? Or? Yeah, I think that what we teach people is that if somebody can cut back or, or do less um, amount of money or time or uh, days or opportunity to gamble, then they probably are not addicted. And, and so do that. Do that to stay within the recreational amount of money to be spent. But those who are addicted just need to stop gambling. However, if they could do it, they would do it. And that's what we want to get out to people is that this addiction is just like other addictions, that if people wanted to quit and could, they wouldn't need help. And that's why we have help for them because like drugs and alcohol, like nicotine, like food addictions, like sex addictions, people need help to stop. And then the goal of treatment and recovery is to stay stopped. So a lot of people go, oh, I quit, and then they're back on the game. Oh, I quit, and then they're back into the bet and the action. So the goal of recovery is to keep them from not going back. 
At most uh, gambling outlets, casinos, video poker places, I've always wondered this. They serve free alcohol. Mm -hmm. Many do, of them do. Do you think that has a lot to do with... It, it can for those players who like to do both. Um, research shows us that those gamblers who are not addicted to both would prefer to gamble. And then let's say if they are addicted to both, they will usually drink after the gambling is done. Most gamblers um, talk about wanting to stay sharp and true to their game and, and not have an edge off of the alcohol or the cognitive impairment. And so um, not that people won't drink and gamble. I think it can loosen up the inhibitions right. for anybody to, to keep playing and have some fun. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with people drinking alcohol or gambling for, for us. We're neutral about that. It's just that we want to work with the people who do have a problem, who have crossed the line. And so some people have, and, and again, um, that can be a problem for both angles of getting somebody medically stable from drugs and alcohol and getting them away from gambling. And again, there's a treatment center in Shreveport, Shreveport called CORE, Center of Recovery, and we've got the website, uh, helpforgambling.org, and you can look at a virtual tour, in fact, of the facility. And, and treatment uh, is usually 30 days? It's about 36 days. People can stay longer. If they free of charge? It's free for Louisiana residents. And other states' residents have gone through CORE, but they pay a small, uh, reasonable fee along the same lines of what we charge the state of Louisiana for Department of Health and Hospitals to pay for a Louisiana resident. So it's free. And let's say somebody can't get there because they're from Hammond, Louisiana. Well, we will get them a Greyhound bus ticket mm. to treatment and back home. We'll take care of all that so that there's no barriers for, tr for people to get to treatment. Because again, sometimes they have no money, they have no means. And so there's no reason to say, well, I just can't go. I know you've done this a long time, and uh, have you seen some real good success stories? You know, I, I think the other day I had a phone call from someone who, in this area of Lafayette, did a uh, piece on treatment and core and problem gambling awareness month, and another one did another uh, radio spot recently. And I think that's why we do what we do, is that these people who thought that they were hopeless, who were depressed and anxious and scared that maybe they could never be honest and get help, have gotten off the bet for years now. And to, to provide that kind of hope for people who feel deeply hopeless and ashamed is, is really what and why we do what we do. That is truly a, a blessing and an honor to give people in Louisiana this kind of treatment between the helpline the counselors all over the state, the treatment center that is next to none in the nation. That's why we've had people from Canada and, and Mexico and 36 other states have presented to court. Really? Yeah. So it's a great treatment center, but yet I still find that Louisiana people don't know about it. So it's my job in 2015, if everybody could tell everybody that there's help for them all over the state and free if you're a Louisiana resident. Uh, we're talking uh, today with Miss Janet Miller. She's from the Louisiana Association of Compulsive Gambling. We're talking about gambling mm -hmm. awareness and how to have the conversation. Now, Janet, how do you approach people? I mean, you you it, do you just straight up just confront them? And well, no, it's a little different for me, Portia, because well, <laughs> besides yeah. being I'm the, talking about just the, having the conversation yeah. with somebody I, I think and that, say, look, do you think you have a gambling problem? I and, think, of course, they're going to say no. Right. And I think if you just ask, you know, we know our family and friends. We know who gambles. And oftentimes if somebody has always been gambling and then they don't talk about it anymore, and yet you kind of sense that they still gamble, but they don't talk about it anymore, and they're always having financial trouble. I would take the courage up and boldly ask them, hey, are you still gambling, and, and are you being dishonest about it? Because, again, majority of the population still gamble recreationally, but to lie about it, to keep it hidden from a population of people and family and friends who do it too, doesn't really make sense. And so when people stop talking, And somebody's going to see you sooner or well, later. Well, sometimes, if nothing else, so those people know. Yeah. And I think that people 
um, don't understand that maybe a gambler really wants to be seen, like you said. And they do want someone to say, is there a problem? Because it's so scary to ask someone. And the way that I tell generally people other than counselors like me is, is if you sense it's not okay to ask, they might have a problem. Right. Because most people gamble, and it's no big deal to say, hey, do you gamble, and, and I gamble, and we all gamble, and and you feel that flow of, of energy to talk about it. When you don't with someone, that, I'm not saying it is a problem always, but to me, it can indicate something's not right when you know the person, you love the person, they love you and respect you, and you can't talk about something like that. It's It's unlike any other or it's just like anything else that we want to be able to talk about things with people and just like any other addiction it can lead to worse it can and and we're actually seeing a lot of connections between of course drugs and alcohol nicotine addiction and sex addiction or sexual um acting out behaviors because, really yeah the brain chemistry is so um so complicated but so similar in the pathways of how People are affected when they're in play of gambling. Now, these are addicts, not everybody. And when they're um, maybe using crystal or cocaine or amphetamines and sexual acting out behaviors. Mm. So there, there are true research showing the same brain mapping and activity there. And so I'm not saying that everybody who gambles or does amphetamines or has a sex addict is all interrelated and doing all this stuff. I'm just saying, though, if there's somebody that you're concerned about in one of those areas, there may be some other interplay going on when they're not doing that. So maybe mm. sometimes we're seeing gamblers who may be into some pornography when they're not gambling. Mm. And we used to think... I was going to ask, you know, sometimes people replace one addiction for the other. And, and sometimes what we're seeing is they, they don't even replace it, they just add it. Add it. And so then it becomes a multiple effects of, of gambling and other addictions that you have to kind of take away all these layers of, of problems when you're working with them. That's why I think that this population is so um, depressed and anxious or can be suicidal at times. Now we've talked about uh, some success stories. Mm -hmm. Can you think of one of the worst the uh, situations you ever come across? I, I think that the situations of hearing people who are the everyday mom and dad who have been working hard, taking care of their families, and then all of a sudden they started getting into a problem with gambling and stole from their company or took money from some place that they were actually being charged and then seeing them go to prison hmm. or jail for people who, again, I'm not saying it's not great for anybody, but people like my mom going to jail and prison and then seeing that person come out and getting help and never doing that again. I mean, I think that to see people go to such a deep place of despair and then come out of that and change your life forever, that's exactly what we want people to know is, you can there is change help. it. There is help, and, and it's for everyone. And if you think you have a problem, uh, there's resources, mm -hmm. you can go to the website. What's the website again? www.helpforgambling.org. All right. Our own very uh, Governor Bobby Jindal issued a proclamation. He did. And why did he uh, issue this? He did this for the month of um, March to be Prom Gambling Awareness Month, and he's actually been supportive of this each year that we've expanded from a week of work on this to the whole month. And so he sent this to us um, right at the first week of March and said, you know, here's your proclamation. And so um, I've been excited to take it and show it to people. Um, because I think it says a lot about our government and the way that we've handled some of our monies that are through the dedicated funds to help problem gamblers and their family and friends. Um, it's not a lot of money, could always be more, but it, it's not, you know, wrecking the budget either. <laughs> and so um, that's not the problem. But that it's nice to be able to provide out of a small pocket of money help for every single person that needs it, be it family, friend, or the gambler. 
And I'm looking on the pamphlet here. It says it's not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. Right. But there's a self-searching, uh, screening questionnaire mm -hmm. with two questions. The first is, have you ever had to lie to people important to you about how much you gamble? Have you ever had to lie to people important to you about how much you gamble? The second question is, have you ever felt the need to bet more and more money? Yeah, because we're looking at that it starts with a certain controlled amount of money that we all do with our budgets for entertainment and recreation. And then it's not that sometimes we won't be out with the girls and decide to spend a little bit more, but it's that continued expansion of spending and spending more and more money and going into responsible monies like your rent or mortgage or your gas money or your grocery money or your electric bill money. I mean, that's not meant for recreation or entertainment. And, and as soon or as... Or kids, or the kids. That, right, the kids don't get any clothes or they don't get a, a, certain things that they need to do because it was spent on. And, and the difficulty is peeling back this to make sure that it's a direct relationship. And then you're always looking for ways to replace that money. And, and so it's what we call chasing the loss or chasing sometimes the wins, but for this one, chasing the losses. And so it never cycles back into gaining it. And the, and the point for gamblers is they just need to stop. And they're going to need help to do that because they've stopped before and they go back. And so we really want them to understand recovery is all about teaching you to maintain the stopping mm -hmm. and, and to change your lifestyle. And they can, but they're going to need help just like any other addict. In the beginning, they need help, and that's what we're here for. And then, you know, hopefully we send them on their way, and they have a great life, and, and they don't need us anymore, you know. <laughs> if you or someone you know has a problem with gambling, uh, please uh, mm -hmm. have the conversation, admit it to yourself, and know that there is help, there is resources here in the state of Louisiana for that problem. You can get in touch uh, with Janet and her office. You can call the help number at one 770 stop or you can visit their website at helpforgambling.org. Helpforgambling.org. That information will be on the screen uh, later on in the show. And uh, you can now uh, chat with somebody. Mm -hmm. You can text. You can text. You can um, email. You can email. You can do any form of, of not kind of less direct communication than talking to people. And you can do it from anywhere. And so the text number is if you put in no bet, N O B E T, and then the number 66. Seven four six. Are people being receptive to the conversation? Can can they we are. say that they are? We're and, helping somebody. I, we are, and we're actually having people that are responding more and more to the text and the chatting. Really, as well as getting the word out that there's actually places. Um, sadly enough, but we're a nonprofit organization. People don't know about all the work that we're doing to help people. And so we want to get that out further and further and reach all the different places in Louisiana that say no matter where you live, no matter where you live in this state, you can receive treatment or help or counseling or just talk to someone free. You just, you're going to have to text, you're going to have to chat or get online and email or call that will help you. Is it like an oxymoron when you, you know, you know deep inside that you need help, you want help, and then you pass that casino right down the street, and there you go. Sure, and, and it seems like the more, some people will say, the more I try to stop, the more I keep gambling. And that's why we have to kind of get in there and do surgery, get in there and, and help the person to really stop and stay stopped. And there are specific ways. There are. And, and one is that's why some people go to the treatment center core to get out of their environment, to get away from all the driving past the casinos and the back rooms and the video poker places, and all, wherever they gamble. It could be on the Internet. Right. But they just have to get away from it and just be focused on themselves 
and what drives them what promotes them to get into the gambling you know are they depressed are they anxious are they struggling with relationships or you know what is going on and and just have some time to examine that and look at that and also take you know we're such a fast-paced society and doing and running and gunning and doing all this that we just want to help people to slow down or slow it down some at least for a period of time to get better Thank you so much for the conversation. You are welcome, and, Portia. Thank uh, you for having me. Anytime you need us to get the word out uh, about anything that you do, please let us know and come back and be with us. Love to. Love to anytime. Janet Miller, uh, and the conversation has been about gambling awareness and having the conversation. If you know someone, look at the numbers and the email on the screen. You can get in touch with somebody, get help for a family mm -hmm. member. It's all free of charge. All you have to do is reach out and do it. That's gonna wrap up the show for today. I'm Portia Evans, and we'll be back again next week with another topic and something else. In the meantime, you be blessed.